and welcome to another volume one One Piece chapter review and discussion. Today we're going to be talking about chapter 1059, one of the craziest chapters that's come out. One of the craziest chapters I feel like I've ever read. <laughs> so many things happen. So many things happen in this chapter. So many things are like revealed and I feel like so many things going forward will be changed. This was insane, Megan. Yeah, it was pretty pretty wild. Pretty wild. Yeah, yeah I'd say so. Yeah. Um yeah, a lot of stuff to to go over. We've been warned about showing panels and stuff, so you know, we might mm -hmm. just pull up like one or two, you know, we're not going to be showing like multiple pages or multiple panels just to just to be safe, but for reference, we might pull up one or two and we were fine last time. Uh, with that so hopefully we'll be fine again but uh, obviously I mean let's just go down the list of uh, things that happen in this chapter I mean we get to see a little Rayleigh versus Blackbeard I don't even know where to start I'm all over the place Rayleigh <laughs> um, you know versus Blackbeard even though it doesn't quite escalate we do get to see them confront each other we get to see Blackbeard confront Boa mm -hmm. uh, the, the abduction of Kobe uh, and <laughs> Let's not forget. Oh, before I get to the big, the big, uh, the big reveal, uh, we got a little flashback of Marco and Yamato. But the big reveal being the what? The Seraphim? Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Again, I mean, with One Piece, nothing surprises me. I mean, anything's possible. It's pretty crazy. One Piece just got biblical, dude. <laughs> uh, I never thought that my, you know, father's conversations about, you know, uh, uh, ancient, you know, Christian mythology would ever come is in handy. Is that what it is? I have uh, no idea. In, well, you know, in, in the Bible, according to my my father, uh, um, you know, there are there are mentions of the seraphim and the nephilim. Uh, you know, the seraphim are also known as the fiery ones. Um, they're angels with six wings. And I was thinking about this and thinking about like the significance of six wings. Obviously, them being part Lunarian is is where the fiery ones kind of come in. Well, but how many warlords? That's are what there? I was going to say. Seven warlords of the sea, but they already got Kuma. They've, they're, they're, there's already been a Kuma pacifista. Mm -hmm. So you take you know one away. That's six. Mm. Because not only do we get to see Boa. A boa, seraphim, pacifista, clone, child soldier hybrid. Um, if you look closely enough, there's a Mihawk one there too. Oda uh, released a panel at the end of a chapter with all the warlords drawn as children. Yeah, you see his sword. And you see his sword. Yeah, the and his sword eyes. was the sword was a definitely. I was like, because I wasn't sure who it was, because you know people look different when they're kids versus adults but i was like oh like the sword totally gave it away like completely i was like damn that yeah that's mihawk for sure because i was kind of confused with the boa one at first because they were like is that and i was like have we met this character before do we know who this is and i didn't even think it was boa until i saw the mihawk one and i was like yeah hmm. and you know i don't know man like it just has me thinking you know it's partially because again many conversations with my dad about about this stuff but uh, uh, or one sided conversations, I should say, mm. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, someone talking at you or you just got to sit there and nod and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy. Um, but, you know, with the biblical significance, I mean, Kuma's mm -hmm. holding the Bible too. Kuma's walking around holding, so holding the Bible. What's the difference between the seraphims? What are they? The seraphim and the Nephilim. What are the Nephilim? The Nephilim are the fallen ones. OK, also known as uh, giants. See, according to uh, uh, certain, like, I guess, biblical interpretations and translations, um, oh. the, uh, the, uh, the Nephilim were known as giants. I believe uh, this is, you know, part of the problem uh, when I, uh, you know, when I mentioned just uh, sitting there and kind of nodding my head during these conversations, you know, I retain uh, whatever. Very little. <laughs> yeah, okay. whatever so you don't have to answer it then. No, no, but in my, in my understanding, I mean, they... they <laughs> They you're setting were, it up where you're like, I don't well, really. Well, I'm just covering my ass. That's what all I'm I doing. talking about. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the Nephilim were also apparently like, you know, the fallen ones because they came down and um, were mated with human beings. And so they had these sort of like half angel, half human beings 
uh, children mm. and they were giants. So when you talk about like David and Goliath and stuff, Goliath was actually, I believe, a Nephilim because he was a giant. He was a, a child of an angel and a, and a human. And that's why they're called the fallen ones because they were cast out because of this, whatever, whatever. Mm. Uh, you know, whether you believe it or not, I mean, you know, uh, is uh, it's just uh, it's just interesting, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, especially I, I you know I view it a, a lot of the times as just another mythology that is uh, that is just interesting. But I mean, even here, it, it, it's just I, I wonder the significance. So I, I you know, I definitely with the the seven uh, the six wings and then the six remaining warlords after Kuma, there could be some sort of significance. There could be some sort of relation there. Um, but what does this mean going forward? I mean, Vegapunk is wild for this. Like Vegapunk has, and it, and it really makes me further sort of even wonder, you know, Vegapunk's, his, uh, his intentions or his, his, you know, where his moral compass lies, I guess, or where does he stand? Like, because these are child soldiers and we know that caesar obviously you know was doing whatever he was doing with kids and punk hazard but mm -hmm. i mean i think that i mean i think that it was the type of situation where maybe it started that way where he was like trying to help or trying to like be a part of like a revolution or something but i think now it is just like i mean this is a clear indicator that like he's kind of maybe gone off the deep end because i just the pacifistas i could maybe see how they could be like redeemed but like what 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 would be the reason to make them children? I have a theory. I don't know if it holds much weight, but um, outside of again, you know, Vega Punk, as far as we know, he can't repli he can he can replicate devil fruits like he did with Kaido's devil fruit, but in terms of the pacifista that was modeled after Kuma, those pacifistas didn't seem to have Kuma's devil fruit ability, right? Mm -hmm. Um, who knows, you know, what these new uh, uh, seraphim are capable of. But I believe the reason for making them children, and I could be wrong, but, uh, you know, I mean, when you look at child soldiers in history, number one, it's mostly, I believe, to sort of throw the enemy off uh, because uh, the enemy is then going to have to, you know, worry about killing children. Um, I mean, that's exactly kind of it's psychological what happened. I mean, it, it didn't stop Blackbeard, but he was just like, what the heck? Like, why is there a kid here? Yeah. Like, he was kind of like, OK. And I mean, it might be interesting, too. Like, they're making younger versions of these already, you know, like people. So if they kill them then like they could get their devil fruit and eat it. I mean, yeah, possibly, I mean, possibly. possibly. I yeah no 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 I I I, I think that's a de definite possibility but you know psychological warfare I think is a huge part of it because let's let's look uh, at the I mean yes and well, no I mean like in one piece I mean how what what has stopped any pirate from beating the I'm shit not, out of I'm the I'm not talking kid. about any pirate I'm talking about the straw hat specifically Nami had a big issue fighting kids in punk hazard the circumstances were different these were mm -hmm. children who you know their biology was being changed and, and you know and you know they were sort of acting um because of this chemical imbalance that 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 caesar had uh, you know put on them i guess or, mm -hmm. or or you know ailed them with but um i mean how do you think the straw hats you know the, yeah i'm not talking about like blackbeard but how do you think how do you think luffy is going to react to having to <laughs> beat the shit out of a kid you know how do you think nami or or any of the other straw hats are going to frankie is going to have to react to beating the shit out of a kid you know I, I i just i they might eventually have to come to terms with it because it is different you know they are genetically modified cloned but you know at what point morally are they going to be okay with it yeah you know? i don't know i mean it might help that they are small versions of warlords <laughs> that they've already fought in the past and it's not like a new kid like this is just like this is, they took their dna without their consent and made clones like yeah they are not real children but the only thing that would be worrisome is if like these pacifistas somehow gained like not sentience but like emotions somehow like 
if they were to show the straw hats that like, you know, they want to be free or like, you know, don't want to be like slaves, I guess that would be the only thing for Luffy. I think that would be a big deal just because, you know, him and oppression are just like he does not like that shit. So if he saw, you know, these clones like trying to think for themselves and like asking for help or quote unquote asking for help, maybe it'll be a trap. Um, then that would be an issue. I don't think that like if Nami saw a mini boa, it would be like, uh, you know, it's just so close to people that they know. Right. Um, it'd be different if it was like a group of kids that he just injected right. with this thing. Uh, th- I mean, that's just opinion. But yeah, I mean, I think that there will be some conflict, but like, I don't know. I don't think it's all strategy, right? Like, mm. I don't, especially with the child warfare, like, I totally, totally see that. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, no, like, you know, if you see a kid, it's like, I don't want to, you know, your I mean, first even thought if it is throws to your be, enemy off for like exactly. a second. That's you what, got the advantage. Exactly. And Blackbeard kind of felt like, oh shit, what the hell? Like, why is there a kid? But then he realized, like, okay, this is not no normal kid. Like, this yeah. is a, a freaking pacifista. Um, but I mean, there would be, that's, probably a main reason but i don't think vegapunk would make it i mean obviously he didn't make it specifically for the straw hats but the straw hats are kind of like an anomaly when it comes to like pirates because like i said i mean like there's so many who are to beat the shit out of kids as it is i mean yeah, steal yeah, kids yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking of sell course. off yeah. kids yeah. I, uh i was like oh well fuck a kid i'll give a shit of how powerful to you but yeah, how much are, are they worth yeah, yeah 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 literally so yeah um, yeah, but I, I do think it's going to pose, uh, you know, sort of an interesting, it's going to be interesting to see them like square up against the straw hats. Like morally, I just, I just wonder like how they're going to come to terms with, with all that. But, you know, it, it's leading people to already speculate what other, you know, pacifista lunarian, uh, uh seraphim we're going to see. Um, because obviously these are people that they have had that have been captured, uh, that have been captured uh, by the government at some point. Hence why they have this Lunarian DNA, because we saw in the Kaido flashback that uh, the, the, the Navy, the Marines had uh, King. Um, so are we going to get to see a Dolphamingo little kid, Dolphamingo Lunarian uh, pacifist? For sure. Are we going to get to see... You know, a Moria one. Are we going to get to see uh, uh, an even Blackbeard one? I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Like, and, and, you know, it is like an issue where like they're going to be like, okay, damn, like you guys are using our DNA for this shit. Like that's kind of fucked up. And it's also the same with the Lunarians. Like, is it just the, the DNA that they got from, from King? Mm-hmm. Or is it multiple different Lunarians? Are they going to come out the way we're going to be like, hey, this is like fucked up too? Like, I think, I in, mean, in my opinion, they would only need one. One. They would only need King's DNA. And, and, and from what, and of course, you never know till you know in One Piece. But from how that conversation kind of went in Wano, there there were no more Lunarians, at mm, least like mm-hmm. uh, from from what most people had seen. King did seem to be this sort of anomaly yeah. or, or one of the last living Lunarians. But but again, you don't know till you know. I mean, there yeah, could the, be a secret, you know, colony oh, yeah. somewhere. And I, like the first time I saw uh, the Mihawk kid. I was like, oh, shit, like there are more Lunarians. But I was like, no, yeah. it's a clone. Yeah, it's so wild, man. It's so crazy. I mean, this literally changes the game. This changes everything. Like this is next level. We knew that the Marines, the Navy, that they would not disband the warlord system if they didn't have a contingency, if they didn't have something to make up for that, you know, power vacuum or that power they'd be losing by allying with the warlords. And mm-hmm. this is it. And this is, a, again, so huge. Um, but it's not just that. I mean, everything we get to see. I mean, Zoro's even recent battle with King and his experience. And again, that's what makes that fight now even more so much crazier because he was able to deduce their sort of weaknesses. Now, these, I'm sure Seraphim will be a little different, obviously, but that knowledge is going to become very useful Mm-hmm. And Zoro is going to, I mean, <laughs> that'd be funny if, uh, you know, Oda the whole time has, has been leading up to this epic battle between Mihawk and Zoro. Mm-hmm. But the twist is it's going to be versus Zoro and like little Mihawk, mm-hmm. little mm-hmm. Lunarian uh, Mihawk. That'd be funny. Um, and he's like, technically they fought, technically. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that knowledge is going to become very, very useful um, when they do. Cross yeah. paths. 
Yeah, and I, I don't know to what extent, like, their actual strength is in these things. I mean, it is their DNA, so I would assume it'd be a good amount of their strength without devil fruit powers because they don't have any. Right. Um. So you can't really use, like, their weaknesses on devil fruit powers because they don't have any of the little pacifistas. So it will be interesting to, like, have that knowledge and see how much that pertains to them actually versus I mean they they know how to I mean the passive visas are like nothing to them now I mean every right. time they show up they're like okay let's just take them out well yeah they are they are part because they're passive visas as well they are part cyborg mm -hmm. so they might not have you know devil fruit the devil fruit abilities of the people they were cloned uh, from but they do have heightened strength you know like we get to see even with Judge and Jerma like all the modifications that they could make that Jerma could make to the human body and the cloning that they could do. And Vegapunk is a way, you know, leaps and bounds, leagues ahead of all of these people. Uh, and they could modify uh, people. And we saw, you know, the original pacifistas and how their bodies were modified and they were human, cyborg, mm -hmm. uh, now Lunarian, all these things. Uh, so again, it is going to be insane to see the Straw Hats kind of come across them. And, I, and I'm curious to see how many more we're going to get to see. I do imagine that it would be the warlords, but theoretically, it could be anybody that the Navy and the Marines have ever captured. Mm -hmm. It could be anybody who they've ever captured they have DNA of. Um, you know, I mean, it could theoretically even be Ace, you know, it could uh, theoretically, I mean, because he was an Impel Down, they caught him, you know, who knows, uh, you know. Theoretically, I'm just, you know, mm. shooting, shooting at the, <laughs> shooting at the wall right now. Is that a term? I don't know. Shooting at the wall. <laughs> Sounds kind of gross. Jesus. Huh? Sounds kind of gross. Huh? Uh, <laughs> but, uh. I feel like it would be the warlords just because they just disbanded them. Right. So like you said, with contingency, like that would make the most sense. The only thing is, I mean, it's very cool. It's very shocking. And it does give another level to like what Vegapunk is capable of, what the world government is capable of and what they're willing to do yeah. in order to like fuck shit up. But at the same time, I'm just like, I I mean, why not just make a Lunarian pacifista? Why? Why? But they did. No, but why make them the warlords? Because they have power. I mean, I, I think, you know, in my opinion, and I don't really know. I mean, they're again, I mean, as children, though, like how powerful not were just, they? As they're not just children there. Again, that the, ch the child part is a psychological warfare part. And they're not just regular children. They're modified. They have these cyborg bodies, you know. No, I know. But yeah, based off of like, why not just make them uh, regular like kids? Why make them like Boa? And why, why, why? Again, because they just have the DNA. I mean, they can get DNA from anyone. But you have to think then that these people somewhere you could have that argument that somewhere in their DNA, they have the 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 potential. These are mm -hmm. it's almost as if like, like the warlords, kid. the warlords are exceptions to humanity or exceptions to power like these it's, people. Yeah, it's like if they have children, like if Boa had a child. Like not everybody is a Boa. You know, um, not yeah. everybody is a Mihawk. You mm -hmm. know, these people, there's something about either their biology, their DNA. There's without something, the devil fruits, though. Even without the devil fruits, because like, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Boa without her devil fruit is still incredibly powerful without her devil fruit. Mm -hmm. Mihawk, incredibly powerful. Um, I think maybe there are some people that do rely on their devil fruits, but I think a lot of. I mean, even Dolphamingo, I mean, yeah, he's he uses his devil fruit very often. Yeah, but, he does. Um, but I mean, you know, even without that power, mm -hmm. they're incredibly, they're exceptions to humanity or, or, or power or whatever you want to, however you want to word it. I mean, mm. there's something about them that is different. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah, like and if you were to, you know, want to create or clone like an all-star athlete you know mm -hmm. you would you would you wouldn't just like you know <laughs> pick someone off the street and you I, know you'd, you'd go for like a, a a legend like a you know yeah i forgot what i was gonna say um but <laughs> sorry uh, continue no no no, no. I, I i do think there is you know the, i think all of these things are going to be like expanded on and, and talked about even even more um but uh yeah jumping around a, a little bit 
We also get the uh, the Yamato and Marco flashback, which in a lot of ways, when I read, I couldn't help but laugh a little bit, not at what I was reading, but just at, you know, the people who were so upset about uh, Yamato not joining the Straw Hats. Almost be- because I almost felt like the nature of manga, we've talked about it before and how it's written and how, you know, Oda has a plan and an outline, but it is something that can be influenced and changed, I feel like. Not that I'm saying he ever would, but I do. I couldn't help but but imagine or wonder, like, if at all that was for those people to be like, yeah, this is a little I, bit more of a reason or more explanation. I why. mean, yeah, but we we got that from what was happening. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. could you could deduce that from what why Yamato was like, yeah, I'm just going to chill here. I'm not going to go out to see you go. Oh, probably because, you know, he wants to stay in Wano just because, you know, what happened with that with that Marine that came in almost yeah, tried to kill yeah. everyone. Oh, I can deduce that instead of being now told like. I'm going to stay in Wano because I can't leave anyone behind. I'm like, you don't have to be that, you know, you don't have to like lay it out for everyone. People should be able to see for themselves and like understand why Yamato would stay and not join the Straw Hats right now. Yeah. It's not that hard. Like, it was funny again because (laughs) I, and I couldn't help, but, but, you know, just smile when I was reading it. Uh, Because there are people already who were online saying like, oh yeah, this makes it. So way, much better. This makes it way better. I don't under you really yeah. like you, really, you really need, need to be that? to be told by yeah. like it. Yeah, I I mean they said it in so many words, and you can from the situation at hand, you can get it. Like you can understand. <laughs> and I know you're just upset that Yamato didn't join, but to say like oh in story aspect now it makes sense. Now I got it. Like you didn't understand before. It was just like. I mean, okay. Yeah, I'm, I might be a little hypocritical, but what I think it does sort of fix, I guess, and not even fix, fix has the connotation that it was like broken before or something was wrong with it before. It wasn't that anything was wrong with it before, um, but I did enjoy seeing Marco leave um, as opposed to him just being gone and me just having to think back and 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 say to myself where did marco go i agree and um, i don't even think that like in all of wano like marco even talked to luffy once or saw luffy right, once right so that's why i was like okay yeah i get that that's where that's yeah. where we need a moment um but the last two chapters was like you know yamato saying i'm not gonna go yamato kind of talking about it a little bit more the fight and then this chapter which yamato again is talking about it yeah. it's like it's okay you could stay and i like the difference difference between Yamato I mean it's 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 also contrasting Yamato and Odin where Odin was like let's go I have yeah. I have responsibilities but I don't want them let's go and Yamato's like yeah I should probably stay because you know I have to protect the people for right now but it would be cool but I should probably do this and it's just like cool to see like how Yamato wants to be Odin and like if Yamato really wanted to be Odin it would have been like bye yeah, everyone yeah right re- re- real quick but Yamato is an Odin and that's like a clear example Difference between the two yeah yeah and it shows that yeah which is like cool and it's like Yamato coming into himself him 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 own him own him own uh, yeah, uh, yeah uh i also really liked that marco we got to see marco head out and catch a ride with shanks i mean that was really cool too uh i don't know how i feel about shanks yeah maybe there's a little i mean i'm a little on the fence not on the fence i never really was a shanks I'm just fan out. i'm looking extra hard extra fan careful girl i never was like oh my god like i you know because we don't really see a lot of him so maybe that's why i was never like the biggest like fan fan i mean like you know i'm a fan of like just aesthetically how he looks but at like personality like i don't know i just didn't really like have a connection with him as much as any of the other characters but yeah i don't know about him and i don't like how he's trying to steal luffy's dream well i don't yeah. like that well, we, um, you know, we got a lot of comments on our most recent, our second to last done piece episode, our, uh, you know, beat by beat, chapter by chapter, arc by arc discussion series. And um, a lot of people were pointing to and saying that they like to believe that because we were s- starting to worry about Shanks's uh, true intentions um, but a lot of people were saying that, you know, maybe he had the devil fruit on his ship when he went to Gao, the Gao kingdom. 
because Roger had mentioned that his son was going to be the next king of the pirates. Uh, and so he was taking the fruit to try to find Ace. Uh, because in the timeline, I think that would have been right around, um, you know, right around, uh, I, I don't know exactly where Ace would have been, but he would have either still been there or have just left. I get time. I'm not good with timelines, but um, it, it just, it just makes more sense than that. Shanks didn't have this like, maybe evil or sinister motive he was maybe transporting that devil fruit and trying to he you know stole it to take it to roger's son initially that was his initial purpose because he went to the right place but luffy got to it first you know mm -hmm. what i mean uh, and that's just you know i i guess like a, a a theory that hasn't you know been stated outright but um yeah i just thought it was Something to make me, I guess, a little less skeptical of no, Shanks' intentions. That bitch is evil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's after evil. After all that, after all I, that theory, no, that bitch is evil. I think he's definitely morally gray, for sure. He's morally gray. I don't know if he's evil. But, bro, I mean, for him to be evil, I mean, that would be wild. I think that he is definitely morally gray, and his morals might not align with Luffy's when they do mm. cross paths, but... You know, to say that he's evil, I, I don't know. That's why that's crazy. I mean, I, time will tell. I time mean, tell. how many how many times have we seen it in media? Scars, evil. Luffy has a scar. Garp has a scar. I'm talking about <laughs> right, right. Sabo, Sabo has an eye scar. It's a burn mark. Burns are, burn marks are scars. Different. Not a scratch. <laughs> Scratches. Oh, you're so specific. <laughs> Scars and evil, you know, people. Scratches. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I know there's going to be people that are like, Shanks is actually not evil. I know. I mean, it's not confirmed yet, but it is just interesting to think about like, um, how yeah. if he could and what that would mean. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah, that's part of the fun. It is very. I think it would be more interesting if he was, I guess. I would be like. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, it's just fun to speculate, fun to think about. Um, also, we get the confrontation between Blackbeard and Boa and Blackbeard really, really, really wanting um, Boa's fruit, Boa's devil fruit, her power, her ability. Mm -hmm. There have been people and I, you know, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but there are even people who say and have said, I think even Parvision touched on this uh when we spoke to him on uh one of our previous episodes mm -hmm. but uh that it might not even be love um that boa is able to manipulate with her devil fruit ability it might be emotion um which could be a a bigger reason why blackbeard wants this power um but also even with just love like him just being able to manipulate that would be enough yeah like, really. that would be so crazy um and kind of also terrifying to see this like incredibly villainous evil like force walk into a room and everybody be in love with him like that would be that would be terrifying mm -hmm. um so this is a power he's had his eye on for a while he's wanted for a while and him and that panel of him choking boa was absolutely insane boa having turned everybody in the in the immediate vicinity to stone and kobe trying to sort of um you know he's trying to negotiate, negotiate for their yeah. lives and blackbeard essentially saying like nah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be safe and and kill you um and her like what a badass moment for her to have this sort of, again, this contingency where she's like, if you do kill me, then no one's ever, even if you get my power, and even if you can control it, you won't be able to turn these people back from stone. So, you know, the decision, the choice <laughs> is yours. Boa is like, bro, people need to stop sleeping on Boa. No, who's who? I don't know, dude. I, just I don't feel, think anyone. I just feel like there are some people who I, and you know for me I, I definitely like as we have gone deeper and deeper and deeper uh, have realized just how incredibly powerful of course she was a warlord but even that panel of her when Kobe was going to to confront her and she's like they made us the seven warlords for a reason 
Boa is just, she's got swagger. She's got power. She's got beauty. Um, she's she's funny. She's yeah. cute. She's strong. I mean, she's got it all. She's yeah. got it all. Yeah, she does. Um, but she is, yeah, just a, a force for sure. And um, you know, even in the even in these like you know really intense moments, she is uh, kept her composure and keeps her composure. And yeah, she's the Empress of Amazon Lily. Yeah, like she has a lot of Captain of the Kuja Pirates. Yeah, she's got a lot of lives she's thinking about in this moment and like what happens if I die you know she she she's very uh yeah I mean she she definitely is just it comes with confidence in her abilities yeah um the last couple things that really happen uh, and there's so much in this chapter so Mm -hmm. much in this chapter and I'm sure upon second read third read you know there will even be more things um to discover but uh, we do get this line from Rayleigh. We get to see Rayleigh show up, confront Blackbeard, um, which was awesome um, on its own. But then this like conversation post battle or post confrontation, coital, um, post coital, uh, was was really crazy because Rayleigh says that if I would have gone toe to toe with Blackbeard, we got. He says we got lucky. If I would have gone toe to toe with Blackbeard, like I don't know that I could have won. I don't think I could have won. I'm old. I'm, you know, yeah. not as strong as I guess I used to be. And Ray Lee, this man is a monster. I mean, Blackbeard's a monster too, but come on, dude. I mean, he was the right hand man to the king of the pirates. Yeah, like, and even Blackbeard was kind of sweating when he saw him show up. But I mean, I guess he doesn't know that he's kind of overpowered him now. Yeah, I <laughs> so mean, you know, that's maybe something that's, you wanna... that's a that's a good thing to not tell anyone else. Oh, that's something you want to keep close to yeah, the chest. You yeah. don't want to go into a fight and go, I think you can beat me now. Yeah, so. no, that's why. Uh, I mean, even his eyes were like, oh, shit. Like, I mean, it's so funny. I saw this meme of like, it's like when Blackbeard and Rayleigh left Amazon Lily or like left the fight from Amazon Lily. It was like Homelander and he was just like, <laughs> like they're both fucked up just from everything. I mean, the reveals of the pacifistas and yeah. just like Ray Lee showing up and like Blackbeard just reacting to that. It was so funny. Uh, but yeah, I, yeah, they got some they got some work to do. Blackbeard's got some new work to do taking out these pacifistas. Yeah, he had a he was worried about taking out the warlords getting their devil fruits. Now he's got to worry about these little freaking brats showing up. And he had to against the boa. Um, uh, pacifista, and uh, even the Mihawk uh, pacifista being there, or or Lunarian um, uh, Seraphim, he had to use like one of his strongest moves. Yeah, to, and he was like he he had to. It was this was a challenge for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, going back to the Ray Ray Lee thing too, like you know, in this new era, you know, this is where I I, I guess you know his power. Um stops i guess you know because of because of uh he has been and continued to be one of the most powerful people um you know in this world but you know mm-hmm. the times they are a changing and I he's mean, getting up there you know he's yeah the first time we really i feel like see I've any seen weakness yeah, yeah. Seen any weakness yeah any weakness at all and I, I i i was just thinking about it too like um and there is strength by the way in admitting that you can't go toe to toe with oh yeah, yeah no i mean he's just saying it in case it happens again and he yeah. fucking gets the shit knocked out of him he's like yeah. i mean it's true I, I just can't do it um because everyone was like bragging we're like oh yeah we got out of that one he was like yeah, we do we got lucky yeah like, we got chill. everybody chill out we got chill. Lucky, like usually any other time i would have been like hell yeah we fucked them up but not this time this time was definitely uh cautionary it was cautionary tale <laughs> yeah uh, but I was just thinking, like, I mean, imagine, uh, imagine if at some point the Navy do or the world government d- does capture Luffy and right. some, I don't know how they would do it. Uh, I mean, their technology, like they're saying at the end of this chapter, because of the new pacifistas, but not only that, um, you know, you have the sea prism paddle boats. I mean, there's like Vegapunk's putting the shit out. So uh, yeah, it's making yeah. it harder and harder because, I mean, that's what they're trying to do. That's what Emu is trying to do or the, you know, the, the elders. Like, they're trying to silence the pirates for a long time and they're trying to reset just like they have done in the past. So they're working their best using the pacifistas in order to, like, chill everyone out. 
So, it, I mean, if they got Luffy, I mean, they would take his DNA for sure. Mm -hmm. And there would be a pacifista little Luffy running around. Because yeah. now everyone knows. I mean, I, I don't think everyone knows, but the world government definitely knows that the picture's Luffy, out there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. On the bounty. Luffy does have the... You Sun know, God Nika yeah. model So mythical zone. I mean, yeah, if you get the DNA for that. I would, well, actually, no, because it wouldn't have his fruit. Yeah, but, you and know... And it wouldn't have his properties. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, again, you know, we've seen Vegapunk. And that's where... I, that's, again, where I am struggling with Vegapunk's morals. Because, obviously, we know that he's sort of like... I don't know if it was because when he replicated Kaido's devil fruit, I don't know that he considered it or he chose not to ever do it again because he considered that a failure um, or if, you know, he thought there was something, you know, morally wrong with it. I, I tend to mm. not think the latter. I tend to not think the latter. But I have sort of maintained, you know, ever since the Kuma situation that uh, Vegapunk isn't truly who we who he has been painted to be. I have maintained that there is some fail safe, that there is some something, whether he's working with the revolution. I mean, I don't I whether he's working with the revolutionaries or not. Like, I, I've always sort of believed that he isn't who he's been told to us to be. But the child soldier thing throws a wrench into everything. That's what makes me question where he stands more than ever. Mm -hmm. Because even if there was a fail safe now in these new pacifistas, morally, you're creating yeah. genetically modified child cyborgs. It, yeah, it would be it would be different if it was an exact replica of Boa, if it was an exact replica of Mihawk, like as adults. Mm -hmm. But the choice to make them children, I mean, I don't know if it has anything to do with like mental warfare, yes, but also just uh I mean I know they're being I know they're able to be controlled just because they are like cyborgs and stuff. But, you know, maybe in order to put DNA or something, they make them a little they could become sentient or and then like they, they're easily manipulated because like they're children. Yeah, you know, I, I don't the, the, know. I don't know. I don't know either. But there's a reason that, why. I mean, there's a, there's I, I, there has to be more of a reason. I mean, two reasons is the child warfare tactic, uh, you know, psychologically. And then the second one would be like the untapped potential that these kids had without the devil fruit, that that, that yeah. they are just powerful people. It just really makes me now question Vegapunk's morals more, because mm -hmm. even though I thought because he honored this like final request from from Kuma, like. Which made me think, like, oh, he does have a heart. Like, he he isn't just this, like... Yeah, but that was so long ago. And who knows what position he is or what the government what? has against him. Exactly. Um, exactly. I just think that, I mean, people change. I don't know uh, what I'm saying. Maybe he, there he was that way at a certain point and then became more evil or just Or, again, like, morally... I think we've talked about it in the past, too, that, you know, they might, again, have his family or his home you know they might threaten the destruction of his his hometown you know threaten yeah. him with that or threaten him with like who knows what like they could just literally have him hostage and they could have all these things that they're just dangling over his head um if he doesn't comply um but uh but yeah it's interesting to see going forward just the threat that this is going to pose not only to blackbeard but you know, for the straw hats and just uh, to for this, everyone. like, this is like the final saga. Again, I have to keep reminding myself of that. Like, it's all coming to a head. What's going to happen in the in this final battle, this final confrontation? Like, these um, new pacifistas are going to play a big part uh, of, of that. And it's just, it changes. It literally changes everything. Yeah. Um, the last big thing is um, Kobe has been abducted by Blackbeard. Uh, uh, this is a, a gagunk moment. Um, I mean, for what reason? You know, that is the only thing out of everything <laughs> that we've talked about that I just have the least amount of like theories about um, or I ideas mean, about. It just could be a power thing. I mean, I don't, a I don't know. Hostage negotiation tactic kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, I mean, again, it got in the newspaper. He was kidnapped. So it's like the tension on Blackbeard again. But 
it is just a little odd. I don't have any ideas. Um, or like you said, theories about like why he would. I definitely think Kobe. that Kobe. I mean, maybe he's. This is yeah. definitely going to give. I mean, if this news gets back to Luffy, mm-hmm. this gives Luffy a reason to seek him out. To 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 yeah to 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 go seek out Blackbeard. Um, I mean, how often does Luffy read the newspaper? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, other people. I mean, other yeah, people, yeah, they would tell people. him. They would tell him, yeah. oh, shit, Kobe got kidnapped. Because uh, if you, that boy is not on social media. That yeah, boy, yeah, 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 Luffy would not have any of that shit. He's like, what do you mean? Uh, but yeah, I, I guess. Um, I mean, that would be, I mean, okay. I don't know. I just feel kind of torn about that idea. Just because yeah, I, it's you just know, an it's, idea. it's like Luffy finally finally after having his crew is going to go on another journey to get i think one more Ponglyph. yeah they have one more to go one more and then road yeah. yeah road Ponglyph, and then they're on their journey so i mean in that time i guess he could go seek out blackbeard but i thought that was more of like a later thing you know um again we are in the final saga i don't know i don't know if i don't know if Again, with this information being leaked, right, about Luffy's devil fruit, whether this was something that Blackbeard already knew, I don't know for certain. Um, but I would maybe think not because if he did, I feel like he'd be really gunning for the Straw Hats, really gunning mm-hmm. for, for Luffy. Maybe with this recent information having been revealed, um, he is again using Kobe as a way to get to Luffy or to bring mm. Luffy to him now that the truth of his devil fruit has been made public. Um, and it could just, it could be that. It could be, uh, you know. Blackbeard works with Luffy. He's going to ask for an alliance. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Luffy because would the, never. there's a new threat. That, I, I feel like that's how it's, I mean, that's how it's going to, it's going to unravel that way. I feel Luffy like. Luffy would never. No, not, in, I mean, uh, yeah, maybe Blackbeard, not Blackbeard, but like uh, with Emu and all of this shit, like no one really knows about it. And once it comes out, I feel like people are going to start like banding together more than ever to, you know, common enemy, I guess. Right. Common threat, but. Right. Um, but yeah, that's in my head. And this is like, you know, super initial gut reaction um reaction in general to the events of this trailer but you know that is kind of where my my mind goes um but let us know in the comments down below what you think um is the is blackbeard's uh, goal in 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 abducting kobe um what he is trying to do um but either way this was an insane way to end the chapter um and yeah, we have Sabo to worry about. Now we got Kobe to worry about. I, I mean, you know, at least we got to find out what happened to Sabo. But, you know, where... Where he at, though. Yeah, where he at, though, for real. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, uh, yeah, just like, you know, we still haven't learned the truth of that incident. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know... I think it goes without saying that we all believe Sabo would never do something like that. Yeah. Um, And I mean, being a weekly reader now, I mean, I am not expecting any type of confirmation from that anytime soon because what we've learned, just like going through it at the pace we were going through it, binging it, like there were so many things that weren't brought back until much, 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 much later. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, uh, I mean, people are, people already have high expectations for One Piece, yeah. But I feel like going into the new saga, going after Wano, people, especially with this chapter, people are expecting this level of, like, reveal or... Intensity. Intensity, yeah, every chapter. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're eating good, dude. We're so lucky that this final saga, I mean, we became weekly readers at the start of the final saga. Yeah. And uh, we are so lucky and so fortunate to have these two that we bangers didn't, that we back didn't to back. get caught up in like Dress Rosa. Yeah. And then, like, all this is happening and we're still, yeah. you know, in Dress Rosa or something. But yeah, like, we're just uh, yeah we're eating good like this is these two chapters have been amazing and there's enough here 
to really like satisfy you and satiate you until Ugh. the next chapter. You don't like that word? I don't like satiate. Uh, until the next chapter comes out. Like satiate. it's just it's just like it's just so crazy. Um and uh this is this is insane and this is a game changer and if every chapter and i know it's it, you know it can't and and probably won't be every single chapter but if most of the chapters <laughs> are like this um we are in for a fucking tree i mean we one piece has been a tree since chapter 1 but you know i mean we are we are re we are really taking things to the next level oda was not playing around in his statement uh, and he mm -hmm. is really taking things to the next level. And you really feel that. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that's going to do it for our first initial reaction discussion on the newest chapter, chapter 1059. Um, let us know your thoughts, your theories. Um, I'm sure there are so many things that we missed. Oh, um, yeah. Shocky was a former empress of uh, uh, Amazon Lily. I don't know if that was something that was revealed before. I don't think it was. I mean, because they hinted at Shocky's connection with Amazon Lily, but it was never confirmed. And that was just casually put there. He always does that he shit. Always does that. He well, like always, he did that with Kuma. Yeah, I know. He did that with Kuma. Bonnie. Yeah, and Bonnie. That was something again that yeah we for, forgot to mention. Um, that was yeah, revealed. That was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was that was just like I was like oh. And so casually, like I said, yeah, thrown out there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm sure there are so many other things that we missed. Again, this is our gut reaction, you know, discussion review uh, on the chapter. So let us know in the comments, you know, your thoughts on the on the chapter. Any theories? Anything you noticed? Any thoughts on anything? that we talked about in this video. Um, we appreciate reading them. Sure, it helps the algorithm, that's true. Um, it helps our channel, that's true. But we also really genuinely enjoy reading all of your comments on these videos. So please leave a comment down below uh, and let us know your thoughts. Uh, but that's gonna do it um, for our One Piece chapter 1059 chapter discussion. Um, if you haven't checked out our Done Piece series, um, Go check that out. They're a lot of fun. We cosplay One Piece characters as much as we can in Wano almost every episode, or I think every episode. Every episode. Oh, no, not one. Uh, oh, right, right. Not one. Uh, we cosplay. We, we Like I said, we, we go through, um, you know, chapter by chapter. We break it up in, in arcs, and we talk beat by beat about the events um, of the series. So uh, check that out. We have our final episode of Wano coming out next Thursday with Teching 101. So that's a Teching collab uh, you can look forward to next Thursday. Us and Teching talking about the end of Wano, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> insane. Uh, so yeah, look uh, look forward to that. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. And uh, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, the only thing left to do now is to get out of here on our outro. It's always the same. It never changes, which today, Megan, should be what? A lot of things mm. happened. Uh, get your hands off Boa. Uh, I'll, you don't mm. like it. Get your hands off Boa. You don't. You want people to put their hands on Boa? No. Uh, That's not what I said. <laughs> um, um, um. Leave ne Kobe Sefer, alone. Except for Seraphim, more like. More like. Got him. Okay, it's it's all right. It's all right. I'm not gonna shoot it down. It's it's okay. I think we could do better. Um, Blackbeard, more like Whackbeard. No, all right. Um, uh, Seraphim, okay, that, yeah, yeah, new pacifistas, um, uh, uh, Vega Punk, Vega Punk, Vega Punk, Vega Punk was wild for this. I don't know. We we're, now it's at the point where we're taking too much time. I think the Boa one's fine. Get your hands off Boa. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next time. Get, Get your, your hands, hands off, off BOA! BOA!